Congressman Beto O'Rourke. We gave his opponent Ted Cruz equal time earlier this month. Now it's Beto's turn taking questions from me and Bud Kennedy from the Star Telegram about his campaign's final week and a half. Congressman, thanks you uh, for the time. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Closing in on the final days, public polls have you down. How do you make that up now? I don't know. I, I wouldn't concede that we're down. Um, I think a lot of the people that we're seeing and visiting with and showing up for are not reflected in anyone's polls. Folks who typically don't vote in midterm election who will vote in this one. Um, students who are getting registered to vote for the first time. People who've dropped out for 20 years and are back in because everything's on the line. I feel really good about our chances and I feel really good given all of these amazing volunteers all over the state, including North Texas, who are out there knocking on doors, making phone calls, uh, make, making this final pitch for our ability to decide the future of this country. But you've raised three times as much as Senator Cruz. Your rallies are significantly larger than any of his are. Why isn't that reflected in the polls? Well, I think, I think um, my contention would be that, that the polls um, may or may not be able to predict the outcomes of these political races anymore, at least maybe not in the way that they used to be. Um, I'll, I'll put my, my money where my mouth is. Uh, I haven't hired a pollster. Um, we're not putting any of these resources into doing polls. We're showing up where people are and listening to them. And so um, everyone uh, in every county um, is, is – um, is being counted on at this moment uh, to turn out for this state in this country. And that's why we've been to every one of them, listening to everybody, not discriminating based on party affiliation or any other difference. Every, everyone welcome to be part of this campaign. You'll see that at the polls on the 6th. Is there a number on turnout that you have to hit? You know, the turnout's usually 35% for midterms. What, what number will it take for you to feel like you can win? I, I don't know. I mean, there, there may be someone on our team that has a, you know, has done a projection on, on this is what it's going to take. Um, I, I just, um, I'm going as hard as is humanly possible, as are all of our volunteers and, and block walkers, because whatever the number is, we know it's going to take everything that we've got um, going to every community and neighborhood to, to get that out. Make sure that we're connecting with everybody. Here in Dallas County, there are some races at the Texas legislature, maybe even in Congress, where those seats, we're told, may go blue because of the turnout to vote for you. If more seats go blue, but you don't win, will you be happy? I, I won't. Um, I'm, I'm in this to win this. Um, I don't want to run uh, the campaign just to run it the right way. I want to run it the right way to win. Um, and so um, all of those folks who are counting on us, those teachers who are working a second job and want to be paid a living wage, um, those folks who know that we should lead on an immigration that we understand better than anyone else, uh, immigration. Um, and, and, and in a state that's the least insured in the United States of America, making sure that we lead the way on guaranteed high quality health care, um, we've got to win to achieve those things. And so um, we, we, we are focused on that. Congressman, some Democrats wonder why you aren't hitting President Trump harder, why you aren't linking your opponent to him. What do you tell them? I'm reflecting the energy of the people of this state. We're, we're not organized against anybody um, or anything or another political party. We're organized for this country. We want to make sure that we're defined by our ambitions, not by who we don't like, who we're afraid of, who we want to defeat. Um, the, the big things that we want to do are only possible if we decide we're going to do them together. That's Republicans and Democrats working together. The legislation that we were able to get signed into law by President Trump that expands mental health care access for veterans couldn't do that if we just kept it to Democrats. Had to be Republicans, had to be this administration as well as Congress. So that's the way that we get things done in this country, working with anyone, anytime, anywhere, as long as it advances our priorities. Well, you, said, you said the nation needs more balance. If, if Democrats win, will you still say they need more balance? I think having um, more balance in our Congress is, is going to be helpful. Forcing consensus and compromise, I know those are dirty words in Washington, D.C. today. That's a good thing for, for our democracy. H having a, a shared interest in the outcomes and being able to give a little bit, not allowing the perfect to become the enemy of the good, um, that, that should distinguish us. Uh, and, and Texans should be able to lead the way. Congressman, uh, Republicans repeatedly cast you as too liberal for Texas. Are you? I mean, uh, we can pick an issue, I mean, any issue, from, from education 
uh, making sure that the teachers are paid a living wage, can teach to the child, not the test. Immigration, making sure dreamers can stay here or not deported. Health care, uh, making sure everyone's well enough to live to their full potential, that no longer is the county jail system in Texas the number one provider of mental health care services. I, I don't know that you can peg those on the political spectrum. Those are things that people, whether in Fort Worth, in Denton, where we just were, in Dallas, um, Republican, Democrat, Independent, they want to see us work on. And listen, if, if we start with the goals, this is what we want to achieve, and don't prescribe the specific path to get there. If we open up to everyone to sit at the table and come up with the solutions, I'm confident that we can lead. We, we, can, we can be uh, at this divided, highly polarized moment, um, the, the strength, the courage, the confidence, um, the, the willingness to work together that the country has been missing for far too long. Do you, is there anything at this point that you already wish you'd done differently? You went to all these counties, you campaigned against politics as usual instead of against your opponent. Is there anything that you would change? No, I, I, this has been um, the most amazing experience of, of my life outside of family. Um, and the people who really are this campaign, it's not the candidate, it's not the political party, it's the people of Texas, um, have, have taught me so much, have, have left me more inspired than I've ever been. Uh, and that's against some of the disappointments that we feel in this country and, and, the, and our level of division. So, um, no, I, I am I'm just honored to, to be a part of this. I uh, feel very grateful. Congressman, I know you've seen the headlines that say that uh, one of the most recent ones, Beto isn't running for Senate anymore. Uh, instead, your campaign is looking at 2020. You constantly rebuff that, but what do you tell people who wonder if you have higher aspirations? I tell them that I don't. Um, and so my, my answer is, you know, are you running for president? No, period. Um, no ever or no right now? Um, definitely no for the, the next six years. I, I want to serve every single day for Texas and the U.S. Senate, deliver on our priorities, make sure that we come through for the communities of North Texas and every single part of the state. You can't do that and run for the president at the same time. We saw that when Ted Cruz left the state to do that. So I'm, I'm committed to Texas. What happens if you don't win? Uh, Is 2020 in your, in your sight? No. Uh, I've got an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, uh, I'm sorry, 11-year-old and a 10-year-old and, and a 7-year-old. Uh, missed the 9-year-old's birthday um, because we were out campaigning. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm there for them going forward, that I help Amy, who's really had um, the, the real burden during this campaign, make, make sure that we, we are there for those kids. So that's, that's, that's our priority after the 6th of November. But doesn't the Democratic Party need someone who can fundraise like you can, who can get people out? The party is lacking that. Oh, in, in a country of 320, 330 million, I'm confident there there are a number of people uh, who will be superior candidates to anything that, that I can do. And um, yeah, looking looking forward to that race. Other people running it, I'm not interested. Uh, I'm focused on Texas. One thing that came up in the second debate when you know, Ted Cruz talks about you wanting a $10 a barrel tax on oil. You know, Dallas Fort Worth is a, a, a lot of oil money here. What did that mean? What was he talking about? You know, he, he was he was making something up to try to scare you and, and others who understand that oil and gas is 10 percent of our economy. But there was a vote on a resolution. There, there was a vote on a resolution and, and the resolution would have tied the president's hands as he tried to raise the necessary money to pay for our infrastructure. Now. We're an oil and gas state. We're also a trading state. Um, our farmers, our ranchers, our producers, our manufacturers are looking for markets around the world. If we don't have the roads and bridges and highways to connect that trade and what we produce to those markets, then we're going to lose the jobs that we're creating here. So all, all, all my vote said is I don't want to tie the president's hands in how he's able to raise that revenue. There was no $10 a barrel or 24 cents a gallon tax uh, being proposed. And so I think this is the kind of fear monger. In fact, th that resolution was put forward so that it could become a campaign issue uh, down the road. Um, I'm, I'm focused on solutions. I want to support the oil and gas industry, make sure that those who are working, providing the value, ensuring that we have our energy independence are supported, that we do it in as responsible a way as possible, but that we also seize on our lead as the number one state in the generation of wind power, uh, moving on up uh, number five right now, but could be number one in solar. And, and those kinds of energy jobs that not only allow us to meet our obligation to the next generation, but are the fastest growing jobs in the United States of America today. Oil, oil and gas complemented by uh, wind and solar. Good deal. Congressman O'Rourke, thank you for the time. Thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, thank you both.